I'm Don Buse, and I am happy to share with you the results of a recent publication of ours titled The Effect of Psychiatric Comorbidities on Headache-Related Disability and Migraine, results of the CAMEO study, which is a chronic migraine epidemiology and outcome study. And this manuscript was published in Headache in 2020. The first author is Dr. Richard Lipton, and my co-authors are Elizabeth Sang, Dr. Chu, Dr. Reed, Dr. Fanny, Dr. Manic Adams, and myself. So the CAMEO study was an online web-based modular study where data were collected between 2012 and 2013 about every three months in a longitudinal approach from a large sample of people living with migraine, about 17,000 people. About 90% of them met criteria for episodic migraine, about 10% met criteria from chronic migraine. And we've had the opportunity from this very rich data set to look at many different interesting variables. And what we wanted to think about today was what is the relationship between headache related disability and depression and or anxiety? So we know that depression and anxiety are both very common comorbidities of migraine. We know that they're bidirectional. Either one may occur before the other and may increase the risk of either one. Certainly living with a chronic illness is not easy, as well as the fact that they all share underlying pathophysiology and neurotransmitters. So it's also not surprising that they travel together. So when we think about migraine, we often think about two major variables. One is the frequency. How often is someone having migraine attacks and how many days per month are they affected by migraine? One is the disability. What impact does migraine have on someone's life, on someone's work? school, family, personal, and social, social functioning. When we want to think about things like measuring clinical trial outcomes, those are often the two primary endpoints. And we want to think about, at least for preventive studies, and also when we want to think about designing our treatment paradigms, we need to think about headache, day frequency, and disability. So disability is an important target that we always want to improve. In fact, when people come into our office, they rarely say, I'd like to reduce my number of headache days. They say, I want to be able to live my life. I want to do well at my job. I want to coach my kids' softball team. I don't want to miss out on life. I want to enjoy my vacation with my family and not be stuck in the hotel room in the dark, quiet room by myself. So disability is a very important target. So we were wondering, what is the relationship between depression, anxiety, and headache-related disability? So we had almost 17,000 respondents from the CAMEO study. About 75% were female, about 84% were Caucasian. As we already know, not surprising, depression was much more common as headache day frequency increased. This is not surprising. So people with chronic migraine had more depression than people with episodic. And even within episodic, we see increases in depression or anxiety rates with each day increase. That people with high frequency episodic migraine have higher rates of depression or anxiety than moderate or low frequency. So it's not surprising. So in this sample, 56% uh, of people with chronic migraine and 30% of people with episodic migraine had depression, 48% of people with chronic and 28% of people with episodic migraine met criteria for anxiety. And combined, 42% of those with chronic and 21% of those with episodic had both depression and anxiety. So after controlling for headache day frequency and other po powerful covariates, depression alone and anxiety alone were associated with 15% rate or 56% rate ratio and a 39% rate ratio increased risks of moderate or severe migraine related disability, respectively. So, to unpack that a little bit, having depression gave someone a 1.6% rate ratio greater odds than if they didn't have depression of having moderate or severe disability. And again, to say that for anxiety, having anxiety gave 1.4 rate ratio, 1.4 times the odds that they would have moderate or severe disability than if they didn't have anxiety. When we combine them, having depression and anxiety, we see a very powerful effect of 79% increase in their likelihood of having moderate or severe depression a moderate or severe headache-related disability than if they didn't have the combination of depression and anxiety or compared with people who did not have depression and anxiety. So depression alone 
and anxiety alone were associated with greater headache-related disability, even after controlling for headache features and sociodemographics and monthly headache days. And when you had the combination of depression and anxiety, that was even more strongly associated with disability. Again, disability is that ability to live one's life. And it's what patients are really looking for. They're really looking for the ability to live their life the way that they want to and need to. So it's a very important clinical target for us. So the fact that it's so tied to depression and anxiety is very important for us to consider. This cross-sectional analysis does not tell us about directionality or causation. However, it's very fair to hypothesize that treating or referring for treatment for depression and anxiety may benefit the person living with migraine and reducing headache-related disability may benefit the depression and anxiety as well as reducing headache days may benefit all of them. We know that these all travel together. So it's just something for us to keep our antennae up about, something to screen for, something to treat, something to normalize in our patients, remind them that living with a chronic disease is not easy. Depression and anxiety are common, but they're very treatable. So we wanna think about treatment with things like cognitive behavioral therapy, pharmacotherapy, or the combination. So thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to talk about this publication. And I hope that this information was helpful and will be helpful to you in your clinical practice.